Welcome back to Cooking with Sven. I am Sven, your host. I just want to give a shout out to uh, Nate and Dave for filling in for uh, two weeks ago when I was on vacation. I threw my back out. It stunk, but it was great. Great episode. Thanks again, guys, for filling in. Tonight, we have a dish that why not, when it's 100 degrees out, why not make some, some nice green pepper soup? Hello, hello. This is Cooking with Sven. I am your host, Sven. Tonight, I have a very special guest. Uh, I've gotten really close with this man. Uh, he is the DFS expert. We talk all the time about this stuff. We are both insanely big Michigan fans as well. I got my I got my Howard jersey on. Um, you can find all of his stuff at Team Team Riser Fall. Uh, he's got articles. He's got YouTube videos constantly, every single day. This man works so damn hard for the DFS. And I appreciate all of his work. I give him feedback. It's it's great banter. My buddy from the Hundred Acre Woods, Detroit Beastie. What's up, my man? Hey, Sven. Good to see you from the kitchen here, the Detroit Beastie <laughs> kitchen. And hopefully, uh, she will make an appearance here. I have a little jar of cookies, which I can you know jangle, and she'll come around. Truth be told, here she's never made a live appearance on on anything I've ever done, even when it's recording. Uh, so really? she's one to hide and stick away. And I like what you said at the beginning of the video here you know green pepper soup with a crusty loaf of bread really good dish especially tomorrow here in michigan it's supposed to be like 105 110 or something like that but i reached out we talked as you said we we banter back and forth every day all day about sports and all that and this was my late father's you know favorite dish i think he was the one who kind of introduced it to the household here and and it, it just be, has become a staple especially you know in the winter and the fall it's, it takes maybe 10 minutes to whip up so i'm glad you asked me on it and boom, here we are. Yeah, I really appreciate it, my man. I mean, I'm very excited. Like, and this is this is exactly why I wanted to do the show, right? Like family recipes, you know, talk about this stuff and like and and sh see the the love and the appreciation that goes into a certain dish, right? And when you said, Hey man, I want to do I want to cook this. This is my late father's recipe. And I was like, done. You're you're on. Like, and here we're making it happen. I remember it was like over a month ago, man. I'm very excited. So we got green pepper soup. So like, do you, do you know kind of like the, where, like where the inspiration came from with your father with this or like not how it happened, well, like the origin? Again, okay. Yeah. Again, not, no, not necessarily. Like I was raised in, let's call it what it is, a primarily Italian household. And my mother, uh, it, it cooks constantly every day. Like I don't, I've never even tried a can of Chef Boyardee. I've never really eaten at Olive Garden. That's sacrilege. So my father, you know, a, a hardworking middle-class guy, you know, worked at the DPW and all that. So he would come home maybe before my mom and somehow, some way he found the recipe. So I don't know where the actual, uh, you know, the derivative of the recipe, maybe it was my, my grandmother, his mother's recipe. She's like 98 or something like that. So it's just really simple. You brown some meat, cut up some peppers, uh, and here we go. So again, I will say uh, from the meat and the green peppers, and we'll get into it as we're cooking and adding the dishes here, this, this recipe, recipe it's not the same if you don't have a, a crusty loaf of bread whether it's a fresh uh, loaf of italian bread or the the old trusty baguette here so that that is a must uh, as we get going when the dish is, is done at the end here Sven. that's that's awesome i love it i got a nice fresh baguette right behind me i think my wife may have snuck a couple pieces <laughs> before she stepped out tonight um but yeah, so I, I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm uh, I'm I'm prepping some uh, some of these peppers. Uh, they're fairly easy. I cut the I cut one. I got I know the recipe called for one, but they were so tiny, you know, at the store, and I was just like, well, I can't I can't just put one tiny one in, right? So I was like, I mean, the name is a green pepper soup, so why not put in two? So I got two of them, and I'll show you how I cut uh, this pepper, so you can kind of utilize almost all the entire pepper, right? I mean, I've seen a lot of things, a lot of videos, everyone posting online. Oh, hey, you know, like, oh, cut it this way, cut it that way. Well, I, I, I like cutting it a certain way and I'm about to show you. No, now, no you put no, oil I in your- I say something really quick, as you can see. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't normally sit down uh, when I cook here, the logo's in my face, but I am 
you know, I'm not making any apologies for how tall I am, but if I were to stand up right now, it wouldn't be fun. You'd see my belly buttoning up. So I know it, it, it seems weird and awkward that I'm sitting down, but it's a way to, if I move this <laughs> over a little bit, it's a way to get all the action going here. You can hear the, the meat is sizzling. I've already basically cooked it as best as I can. I've drained the meat, or excuse me, drained the meat. I've drained the, you know, the grease that comes with it. So now, as you can see, very, very low heat. You don't want it to burn or stick to the bottom of the pan. And then as we yep, get yep. open, that's when we throw the green pepper in. And Sven, you, you've done a magical, awesome job cutting up that green pepper, if I may say so. Thank you. Thank you. I still have the other one that I'm about to show, right? So, so you throw in the pepper after the beef, right? So I'm going to throw my Correct. beef in yeah, right now. Do, I do the pepper uh, same time as the, uh, the tomato soup, right? And that's, that just, there's nothing better than an old fashioned Campbell's tomato soup, tomato rice. And you throw that in there in the recipe, it calls for two cans of that. And then you fill each one up with water per usual. And it gives you this, this beautiful, you can see this right here. It's not pasta sauce. It's just Campbell's soup. Uh, and two uh, cans of water, two cups of water and Campbell's soup. So then we'll pour that in at the same time. And I'm sure you'll be able to hear that sizzle as we get going. Yep. Too. I got I got my beef in right now, too. I'm cooking. There it is, yeah. Awesome, man. And then you spin it this around is... here. All right. And then you drain it, right? Which, yeah, yeah, get, get some of that nice grease out. Because I'm using an 80-20, right? An 80-20 ground chuck. Yeah, you do the uh, – I, I cooked the meat separate before we were uh, broadcasting here. Let me scoot up. I cooked the meat separate, and then I, I drained the meat here uh, before I added in all the all the goodies here. So the, the meat is good to go. Same thing, 80-20, uh, which is it, fairly lean. I mean, you can get 90-10 or, you know, some of that ah. other, you know, that dog crap meat is like 70-30. But, you know, if you're going to make this, it's uh, it can last for – Let's just call it a week sometimes with the bread. So you want to make sure the meat is is of the highest quality. You know, shout out to all the folks. Uh, if you are vegan or, or else, I'm sure you could do turkey burger. Or you could do that. I'm sure you, I, you've seen some right, or... impossible meat, you know, like the impossible Whopper. You could do it as, you know, however you want to. Just you have to have green pepper and a tomato soup. That's the whole recipe. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And And looking at this recipe, too, when you sent it to me, very similar to like what my father, um, he's, uh, my father's from Austria and he has a stuffed, stuffed green peppers recipe, okay. a family recipe that his mother used to make all the time. And this basically is like exactly the same thing. It's not, it's not made with orzo. Uh, there are tomatoes. There's, uh, I mean the ground beef and the pepper, like it just, so seeing that it just, it really reminded me of my father's, uh, the green pepper uh, recipe that he used to make. No, oh yeah, stuffed peppers are. Everybody's got their own recipe for that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just the pepper and, is the same. The only difference is what? How do you mix the meat? What do you put? I think we lost Beastie and, for uh, a second. You know, the softball sauce you pour over it. Normally, it's. A I know I'm a, I'm a little ahead of you here in terms of, of adding everything, but I think that's all well and good because I can hang no, out. No, it's all this, good. You know, it's all good, man. The, I'm Wait for it to get, uh, you know, very hot, and then you pour the orzo in. And when we get to yeah. that portion, I have a, uh, a very important state. I think, we, I think Beastie's internet is just a little choppy. All right, I'm going to drain my beef right now. Okay. Beef is getting drained. And yes, and Beastie, this, nice this is change of pace. I'm always doing right. Your DFS stuff. This is definitely different. DFS. I'm never rarely <laughs> cooking on camera. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. And this is the first. This is the first episode that I am using my portable burner. I thought I would oh, bust yeah, it out and actually. Way, huh? Yeah, and cook and cook on the counter so that I'm not like constantly turning around, you know, and whatnot. And I'll I'll be sure to show uh, once it's all, uh, you know, once it's all cooking in there. But uh, so here, so here's here's how I cut. I don't know if if anybody else, but here's how I cut a pepper. I mean, this is a very unique looking pepper. Oh. 
very yeah. good. Yeah, you get the core out and all the seeds, and it's not like a, like a hot pepper where if you, the seeds are like the hottest part of it, but it's a green pepper. It's probably nothing crazy in terms of like right? mild. Some exactly. Some of them are actually pretty sweet. I love peppers. I just eat them as a snack. I've been making oh, homemade yeah, hummus. Tomatoes. Yeah, I've been making homemade hummus a lot a bunch lately. So I've been liking the peppers, you know, dipped in the hummus and whatnot. Absolutely. This is awesome. All right, we got the peppers cooking. I got those in, and then I'm about to throw the meat back into it. Good, good, good. You uh, so you hitting up the you're hitting up the it. expo this year. Absolutely. I already booked. Uh, I, I know Kelly in Phoenix looks to be in the chat along some other folks. Yeah, we're hitting our way there. Going to meet up with Jemmo per usual. And I, I don't know. Jemmo's probably not watching. That guy's an icon. He's got so much stuff to do. But uh, last year at the Expo, uh, it was phenomenal. You and I met in the lobby. A quick, yep. a quick. It was a good hug. And we talked for a little while. And you know what? I, I feel I, I don't need to apologize for anything. But I feel like when I ran into you in the hall, like I was saying my goodbyes because I had like, what, a three, three and a half hour drive back home to Detroit. And the night before, oh, yeah. you know, we were out late. You know, me and the boys were out late. Didn't get back to the hotel room until like three or four in the morning. So in the morning at the actual expo, the whole reason everybody was there, it was what was it burned out per se, but it was like I had, you know, I had I had great conversations with everybody for hours on end at that little mixer outside there. So this yep, year yep. I'm hoping to uh you know not burn out, you know, the night before, you know, get back at three, four in the morning with, you know, two dozen bean burritos, you know, so here we are. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, it was an absolute blast. I know I saw Kelly, she's excited. I'm I'm very excited. I got my brother actually coming out who once was one third of the fantasy fam podcast that we used to have for like three years. Um, but we unfortunately uh, parted ways with it years, a couple of years ago, but uh, yeah, and he's a diehard. He's a, he's the reason I'm a Michigan fan. I have no okay. idea why, but I'm a Michigan. Yeah. I know. I do want to ask you. So you have a weird combo going on. You got the U of M jersey, one of the best, maybe the best college jerseys in all of sports for sure. That the best helmet, the winged, the winged helmet there. But I noticed you have a, a Dallas Cowboys apron on along with that one. So you know, not really a weird combo to you or in your household. But most of us, you got the Cowboy Chef hat on the cowboy, uh, you know, apron, and then the Michigan jersey. I had no idea. I thought you were a Michigan guy. I mean, you're, you're free to, uh, you know, be an allegiance to any team you want, but is there a story behind your Dallas Cowboys fandom, Sven, that you haven't shared so, uh, with anybody? I've I've always been, like, and I'm, I'm originally from New York, right? Uh, my buddy Peter, he's laughing because he knows, like, he's he's a Cowboys fan, and he's, he's my buddy from Texas, right? So I grew up in New York. And I lived there 25 years, right? My first 25 years of my life. I'm a Yankees fan. I was a Cowboys fan. <laughs> uh, Devils for hockey. And then I guess when the Knicks are good, right? But I don't even really watch NBA. I did watch a little of the finals this year. but And then, of course, as irony would prove, I moved to Texas, right? Like out of all the places that I could possibly move to, I moved 20 minutes away from Jerry World. It's un unbelievable. Um yeah, uh, hopefully my phone doesn't overheat on this episode. I'm going to have to uh, change the angle up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to do that now because I, I want to talk about adding the Orzo in, which is obviously that's a huge portion. There, I mean, there's three staples in this thing, right? It's the meat, it's the green pepper, uh, and it's the Orzo. That's that's what makes it uh, how it is. So let me change the camera angle as we're, we're going along here. You might catch uh, the beast. He's yeah, been yeah. roaming around here. I just tried to flip down and grab her, but again, she wasn't having it uh, per usual. So here's the, uh, just one cup of orzo, as you can see, beautifully, you know, half a cup, excuse me, and it's beautifully uh, presented here, and you pour it in. I love orzo. Yeah, it's it's so good for everything. Most people will probably recognize orzo, and I'm speaking like I'm some, you know, sous chef or some five-star chef, but you'll recognize orzo from like uh, like cold pasta salads and stuff. You can have it with a lot yep. of stuff. And this one, it's pretty good. But the, the big thing I wanted to mention, my mom made me, she's like, if you're gonna cook the orzo in there, you have to tell folks, as soon as you pour the orzo in uh, with, with all the tomato juice, that is starting to bubble up with the meat, you have to take, you cannot step up and walk away. You have to stir 
uh, for the next like five to 10 minutes because it will stick to the bottom of the pan and it's not going to affect the dish per se, but it's going to make it so hard to kind of clean this thing when you're done. So much so, you know, a, a, a dishwasher probably wouldn't make many moves. So you'd have to scrape the bottom of it. So as I'm talking, yep, yep. I've been stirred one time. So let's get to that. And we turn the heat up. I'm, I don't know. I'm just going to turn the heat up about halfway here, about five or six, if you have a, a stove dial like that. And we're just going to stir. We're just going to hang here. And we're going to stir it and you can start to smell it. And I already, I know I'm a little bit ahead. And the so tomatoes. No, you're good, man. I'm about to add the bread. tomatoes. Okay. I'm going to add my tomatoes. How does it look right now? Is this, how's, how's mine looking? Not too bad. Yeah. Now, now it's time to put in the, all the, the tomato, the tomato, um, okay. the Campbell's tomato uh, with the water. And you can do, I have this as well, uh, the, the uh, diced tomatoes. I'm not a big fan. Of, of stewed tomatoes some folks it's their staple especially in pasta sauce and all that i'm not a fan yep, i love yep. tomatoes i told you moments ago i'll eat one of those suckers right off the vine here but in anything uh like this like big hunks of tomatoes they seem to be a turn off to me so i get diced tomatoes and as you can see kroger is the local uh, you know market here and you can also buy this one i don't know if that uh if you can see that but it says uh, Italian style. So I'm sure there's a little bit of oh, oregano nice. in there, maybe a little <laughs> touch of olive oil, but uh, it makes just a little bit of a difference here when you add in the, the, uh, the diced up or sliced up tomatoes. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. All right. So am I adding the soup? I'm adding the soup in the water, right? Correct. Yeah. Two cans. Okay. Of, uh, here we go. I know I'm a little bit ahead of you, but I think that's cool for what we're doing here. Yeah. Two cans of the condensed tomato soup. And then uh, you, yep. you'll fill you'll fill these up once a piece, and then you pour it. And that's the same way you would make it if you were just having the tomato soup with, say, a grilled cheese. So then you, you okay. put in, yep. let's yep. just call it two cups of water, and then you start to stir. Uh, turn up the heat a little bit because the meat is already cooked. Uh, it looks like you cooked the green cut and, and kind of uh, you know cooked the green peppers a little bit, but you want the the broth or however you want to put it to be you know, almost on the verge of boiling, if not boiling, when you put the orzo in, because that's the way, obviously, okay. you know, a pasta is cooked in boiling water or something along those lines. Right, exactly. And I saw Kelly asked the question um, about it cooks like rice. Exactly. Like it's, I thought it was like, I mean, it depends on the store, but I feel like you just, you find it in the pasta area, right, orzo? Because it is technically, I believe it's a pasta, right? But it looks exactly like a rice. Like it looks like a rice pilaf that you would get. Yeah, they're just little hunks, but they're, the thing is, is that with, with rice, we all know what rice is. We've had rice a million times in our life, and orzo is a, a little bit shorter, and I, again, I'm making this up as I go, because we're live on broadcast yeah. here. It's like I got it's it right a little here. thicker in the middle. They're, they look like mini footballs in a way. Rice is just long and thin. It's got the they same diameter from start to finish here, and an orzo they do. is like the little mini football, if that makes any sense. See it? Yeah. All right. For the viewers. There you go. There's your orzo. And here we go. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to move the camera and get a good shot of this because it's starting to bubble and boil up. Oh yeah, you man. Can really see. Cause I love the way you have yours set up here. I'm just going to slowly move this and put it down. Hopefully my phone doesn't fall in there, but uh, here we are. As you can see, it's starting to. Oh, that boil. looks awesome. And it's not, I, I, I keep mentioning boil. It's not like full blown heat, like you're making noodles, but like once you, you see get, the bubbles and then lower it back down, yeah, right? And then you, yeah, yeah. You get to a yep. simmering kind of situation and then you keep stirring. And as you can see, let me really get in there, turn this. You can see the hunks of, uh, you know, green pepper in the, the tomatoes and there's the orzo starting to take shape there. That looks, that looks awesome. All right. Thank Mine God is my getting there before this. There we go. So I got the diced, I got the diced tomatoes too, right? The ones that you said. So should we put like, should I put in the canned tomatoes or not yet? That's when the orzo is about to go in. You could, I would, to be honest with you, I would put it in now. And then so you okay. could put it in with the, at the same time as the orzo because you're going to be stirring anyways. You know what I mean? So there's really true, no, true. Uh, there's no harm in adding it now or later. So I just like to put everything in the pot now and keep my eye on it and, uh, and keep stirring it. So now, uh, this, it's starting to really boil. So I'm going to turn it down and simmer. Uh, and we're looking that it's been about what? I don't have a timer, but it's, I think it's been about eight to 10 minutes. So I'm going to keep stirring. Uh, make For sure you, yeah. So it gets I would, a little plump. Not stuck yep, I would bottom. say that. Oh, yeah. And I notice you have, what is that? A little uh, emulsif. Oh, no, you got a little uh, spa spatula here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm that trying not to spin it. 
I'm trying not to mix this, it. This flat wooden spoon, you can see the steam coming off of it. Hey, I like I'm I, I like the wood ones, but I, I'd rather do the more plastic because I feel like over time the wood ones, when you start cleaning them under water too much, you know what I mean? Like they could like lose their their mojo, you know, like as time goes it, on. I think it's the opposite. <laughs> the more you use them, the more character and mojo it gets. Yeah, okay. From that side, there you go. I like Kinda it. Like I skillet. like it. If you cook yep. a steak in there or, or any sort of meat and you season it, uh, you're not really supposed to like like wash it that hard. You're supposed to just rinse it and wipe it down, but you're always supposed to leave it uh, oil because, again, it gives it a sense of, of character here, and I, I don't think you want it to rust. So with the wooden spoons, you wash it, and that's it. You don't put away dirty utensils. But to me, these things, you can see, these things have been around. I'd have to – this probably been in the family for 80 years, you know, kidding around, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. My mother has a pan that she makes. Uh, so you said you're Italian. Correct. My, my mother makes uh stromboli. Like it is, it's, it is like the thing for the family. It's crazy, right? Like growing up, like I would have my cousins ask for a, like, Oh, what do you want for your birthday? They'd be like, Aunt Donna, could, could I get a stromboli for my birthday? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I don't want money she, or a car. Just make me some food. Yeah. And she has, and she has a, uh, um, a pan that has the imprint of the stromboli on it, dude. This thing is, oh my God. Like, it, uh, she's coming to, she's coming to visit. Um, she's coming to visit us in, uh, in August actually by herself. So oh, I nice. was like, you gotta make, we gotta make some strombolis, but we're going to make the homemade dough. She's not, she doesn't take it a step further. Give me one sec. I got to turn around there. So I, if we're going to talk about yeah. the heirlooms yeah. in the kitchen, I have something I think people would like to see. It's an old, I, it might be solid silver. I don't know, but it's a little handheld strainer and this thing is legit. Uh, been in Ooh, the okay. for probably 80 or 100 years. I fool around with my mom, but uh, you don't really use it for anything anymore because it's so tiny. But just having it in the house, knowing, you know, that that my, my great aunts used it, my mom's aunt used it, maybe even her, you know, grandma and go down the line. Give me two seconds. It's right. Behind yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. I saw that, Kelly. Yes, maybe I do buy the cheap wooden spoons, but I do like also I like the rubber ones. Oh, that is awesome. That look is an this, look awesome at the, strainer. The, the on. Look, you can tell just looking at it that I know the ring light is, is really blinding you here. But no, you can I see tell it. The, the craftsmanship, the handle is completely different from from this. And when you look at it, the, the holes are very small in there and it gets the job done. And you can even you look at the little hook on there. You can even hook it boom, and leave it there uh, as, you're, awesome. as you're moving along here. So this thing probably is seen, you know, not seen better days. It's in perfect condition. But the the, the stories this thing might have, if it could talk here, you know what I mean? And the right? pots of pasta that this thing strained for, for families, uh, you know, in generations. So I think it's uh, pretty nice. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I just added my Orzo now, right? So okay. I guess another... Eight to ten, you said, kind of, right? It's got to cook a little bit. Correct, yeah. And I'm, I'm just, just kind of just so mixing it. Once we get to this point, you know, where, where everything, it's been cooking and boiling for, you know, 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, it's not really a, a, a secret sauce here. It's just Worcestershire sauce here. As you can see, again, Kroger brand, nothing fancy. We all know what Worcestershire sauce is. Uh, it, it's very potent, so you're not going to want to put a lot in there. Just a couple of drops, just boop, boop. And, and we go from there. So maybe I'll bring the camera down so folks can actually, because there's no real measurement uh, that I have for that. But as you can see, uh, we'll put it in now. Just one, two, and two little squirts. And that's about it because it can be. And when do like you, you put it in at the a end? A little bit, get stuck in your nose. You know, it, it's a bad move. So you put that in and you stir it around. Uh, and then you, you you keep letting it uh, you know simmer in a way. I have my the fire set at around two right now, so it's not really high heat by any means, but okay. it's not really you know a, a zero where the flame is 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 really you know very tiny. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then you and add I'll, that. Would you you add it at the end a little bit? Like the worst yeah, to share, right, you right, kind of you, yeah, right you at the end okay. We're getting towards got the it, end got it. And one thing I can't believe I missed this because. You're using, uh, no offense here, but you, you're using a, a plastic thing. You can see this when you, you scrape the bottom so the orzo doesn't stick. This really gets in there, and you can see some of the remnants of orzo there that were stuck Ooh. in this this metal, or not metal, this wooden spoon kind of. It's yep, flat yep. Metal, and you can really, you know, dig the bottom and, and turn stuff over while you're in there. Yeah, no, I like that. That's, yeah. Because, again, if, if you 
you use, uh, I ran into this problem before, if you use a wire whisk, as you can see in, in relative to my face here, as you spin that around, let me show you this, when you pull it out, uh, it gets everything stuck in the middle, as you can see. Clump it, exactly. Ex pepper and everything. So, exactly. Just a nice, uh, something flat, it doesn't matter. If it's even a spatula, is good to go. If you can really scrape in and make sure the orzo doesn't stick. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Also, just want to, uh, for anybody watching, um, just be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel in between media uh, and hit the like button, please. Just give us give us some likes, right? I mean, who doesn't love food, right? And I just want to oh, also yeah. appreciate uh, Beastie hopping on again. Uh, just really appreciate that. And, uh, and give a shout out to my man, Dave, from behind the scenes. So all these camera angles and everything that you see changing and stuff like that, that's my man, Dave. That's your trick. Yeah. And really quick, if I may, shout out to Nate and his wife, Jen, uh, two of the, the most kindest human beings I've ever met. And to be fair with you, Sven, I don't think I've ever had a bad interaction with that. I don't think I've had a bad interaction with many folks, but Nate and Jen, uh, they are two two very special human beings, you know, in, in terms yes, they of are. what they're doing and how they go about things. And I know uh, Kelly works for in between and even Sam. I know he's a young kid, just graduated college, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, shout out to him and congratulations for that. But uh, IBT is uh, it, it, it's outstanding from start to finish. And you and you guys and girls, in my opinion, uh, don't get the, the, the accolades or, or the, you know, the, the high and mightiness from that other websites do. It's kind you mentioned before we started that every day I got something out. IBT Media has things coming out every day and they're they're, they're not as uh, you know shallow or, or they're, they don't end quickly as the, so, some of my stuff does. It's one and done with baseball or hockey, but Jen really puts her heart and soul uh, into all the content she posts and writes. So, you know, shout out to IBT and everybody a part of it and, and Dave as well interacted just briefly uh, before we went live here. Yeah, no, really appreciate that. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the kind words. I know everybody watching will really appreciate that, and that's awesome. Then you went to the uh, so, and you went to the draft too. I saw right. that. That was awesome. Oh my god, that that yeah, must it was have been uh, the thrill of a lifetime. I mean, come on. And I and saw you saw Kelly it. out there, right. You and Kelly got to link up. That was all. That's yeah, awesome. You guys there. got to. Uh, and that's what was so wild cool, man. Is, you know, you, you get the. The, the backstage pass or the, the media pass, which was yep, in, yep. in and itself, you know, humble. Like I could have died a happy man there. But when you get there, everybody was there. It was like hurting, you know, in terms of the media staff and everybody with cameras. And they were all being put into one room, which was a massive room. But it seemed like there was a thousand people in there. And I came across the the Wood, Woodward Sports is, is where I got my media pass. So thanks to them. I've done everything I can to thank them and, and you know, shout them out here. <laughs> but I just happened to sit down uh, and it was the, the the Woodward Sports cameraman. He's, he came in from L.A. or something. He goes, I. I I want to go walk around, see what we can find. You know what I mean? So I said, you know what? I'm, he had one of these really nice cameras, the one you would see on like an African safari where the, the, the bear, like it's oh, like this. I go, can I grab wow. one of your cameras and we'll just walk around uh, like we know what we're doing. And maybe just we got the, the press pass and a camera. People aren't going to ask too many questions. So we started walking around. And we, we, we went into the room, which came come to find out was the room where all the kids were were put in after they were drafted. You know, that little backdrop with the, with a the microphone. Yep, yep. And we sat oh, yeah. our butts down front, like first seat, front row. And I said, you know what, let's grab our stuff. And, and we're not going to move from the spot and come to find out. We got to talk to Aiden. We got to talk to Kayvon, Juice, Sauce That's Gardner. I mean, awesome. everybody. It was unbelievable. And it kind of happened, not by mistake, but it's just like, let's walk around and see what happens. And, and that's what, what what came of it and all the clips and, and, and photos we took. So, again, Sven, once in a lifetime trip. I don't have any kids, just beastie. But even if I were to have kids, uh, this would still be higher on my list than anything I've done up to this day in my life. Dude, no, that, I mean, it just, it looked awesome. Everybody that was there, like, I mean, I was following your pictures, whatever you were posting, right? I even messaged you too, like, while you were there and whatnot, like, that's, like, I just, I can't even, I mean, because I, I went to the draft when it was at Jerry World, but that's, it's different, right? That's completely different. Like, I went as a fan and it, hell yeah, it was, it was a great experience. We actually got to be on ESPN because we were right behind, like, the college game day guys. So, yeah, like, I, like, I forget who recorded it for me, but I, you could see me, like, so vividly but dude that right there like 
Oh my God. One, I would it's love to literally a part that. of it. You know, you, you talk to these kids uh, on what, what, you know, I would like to think, you know, being drafted is probably leading up to that point, the best day of their life. So uh, yeah. no, but I, I have to be honest here. Not one, uh, you know, kid that was drafted, not one piece of the other media or, or PR people, agents, I, not one, not mm -hmm. one person was rude. It was all like, you know, sunshine and rainbows in a way. And I use that term because it paints a picture that everything is going to be fine or everything was great, but it was from start to finish. Uh, again, I've said this a, a lot, not only on this broadcast, but other shows, it was, you know, the thrill of a lifetime, you know, everything I've done leading up to this. I know that sounds a little bit over dramatic, but I'm telling you, when no, you're not at all. in person, uh, it, it, it's different when you're there and you can talk to some of these people and feel like you're a part of something. You know, it was uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Put a couple drops in there. I would say, yeah, that's good. And you and we can do all this stuff to taste. Like if I, you know, let this kind of simmer for a little while, I'll taste and I have some uh, some sea salt here, like the bigger the bigger. I don't know what you call them, kernels or whatever here of sea salt. We oh, like your nice your coarse, right? Your coarse yeah, salt. Like the, like exactly. This guy. The salt guy. <laughs> Like that clown. <laughs> guys, the yeah, no, this that. is got, what is he? Guys got like two big steakhouses now, and, and each cut of meat is like a hundred grand. So yeah, you know, right. No thanks. Now? Exactly right, but no thank you. I refuse. But yeah, I keep the uh, I keep a little dish next to my kitchen, like Me like too, this right filled here. with the course. Exactly, there, and that's I got it in a little uh, little glad rubbermaid container. Oh, right nice! There. I love those. Yep, I used to have oh, them good, in that. Yeah. Until we bought our until we bought our house, and then I was like, Basically, all right, I had the counter space. I don't know if anybody's out there going, what kind of salt are they using to, to maybe put it into perspective? If I'm not mistaken, so this is basically the salt you would find on a, on a soft pretzel. You know, it's, it's bigger. Correct. And it's more Correct. Coarse. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So you get more. I feel like you get more if you cook with that particular type of salt. Yeah. I feel like you get more of the salt. Like it doesn't more make it lumps, saltier. Yeah. Exactly. Like there's just. It, there, there's more to it, right? And I you know feel like there's this is, this is outstanding on is I, I know I don't know a lot of people when you're kids you hate Brussels sprouts and, and green beans and stuff. I love but as Brussels an adult, sprouts. you can cut up Brussels sprouts and then you bake them in the oven on a cookie sheet and you slather olive oil all over them and then you can cake them with this salt and it with a little bit of vinaigrette at the end. It's uh, it, it's unbelievable. A lot of restaurants now, like not even higher end restaurants. That's now an appetizer where you can get, you know, yep. cooked or, or baked uh, Brussels sprouts with the salt and the vinaigrette. This goes exceptionally well uh, with that on the menu as well. So, yeah, so I just added a little bit, pinch of salt, right? Um, yes. And then I added uh, some ground pepper as well. What I'm right? doing salt and pepper, speak, yes. exactly. Love it. And love again, it. all this stuff, you know, the, the, the salt and the Worcestershire and the, the pepper, that's all to taste. So, you know, we'll stir this around and, and it's... Uh, it, picking up some steam here. So now is when, you know, I would, you know, a little bit of a spoonful, taste it and see what else it needs. But at this point, it's basically, you know, all done. You let it cool off a little bit before you eat it. And I know we'll get there. Uh, you're a few minutes behind all well and good here, but now is where you would taste it. You think it needs, as the chef here, Sven, it's up to you. It's up to us to see, you know, what it exactly. tastes like. It needs just a little bit more salt or it needs just a little bit more Worcestershire What's up, sauce. Mate? This is the time of, of the recipe where you would add any of those in. Exactly. And I always, and I stress on the show all the time too, less is more, right? right. You can always add, but you can never take out, never right? Take I mean, and then, oh, right. exactly. And then you got to be, not, not that you have to be elite, but you got to be, you have to have a very good palate and know how certain things like, okay, this is way too spicy. How can I make it less spicy? You know what I mean? Like Correct. what ingredients yeah. do I add? Stuff like that. Like, so it's like always, always add a little bit, try it. A little bit. If you're trying it a hundred times, that's fine. But if you need to, you need to get to that point. Yes, less is so much more when it comes to all this. Yeah. And I saw and Kelly. I, I, say, I, I actually. Good... Go ahead. Oh I'm yeah, yeah. To oh, I was gonna say. Uh, I I I actually have the uh, the Himalayan salt. I like I like this the taste that a Himalayan salt gives rather than like your regular kosher salt or like the coarse like table salt, right? Yeah. That pink. I don't know if you've ever heard that stuff. That Himalayan yeah, yeah. sounds like pink. There we go. Oh, that that looks, big hunk of green pepper right there. And you that can see looks fall awesome. Like the is, is beautifully cooked. And we go from there. And this is about the time I, I already did that, but I have no problem telling you that. I cut the, the stove off and we'll let it kind of not marinate, okay, but we'll okay. let it just uh, kind of cool off. And 
whatever little bit of cooking left to do. It'll do it on its own based on the temperature of uh, what we have going on. Let, let me get my spoon. Let me get my serving spoon. I'm going to need a serving bowl. Now, when do we when do we add this baguette? When does the bread come in? The bread comes in when, when we're eating it. It's, it's just that simple. You put it in a bowl, and uh, you can cut up the, the baguette however you want. I already cut a hunk off of it. Uh, and you just, I, I like to just tear it over it, you know, so any, any crumbs. So you get the crumbs right off. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's nothing crazy. And then that's, you you've done this before. You've, yeah, absolutely. you've done yeah, this so with, far. Uh, like, even if I have pasta, there's no, I don't give my plate away to, to the dishwasher or anything until I've sopped up all the sauce, gravy, however you want to call it. Same thing with what, with this, when you make a, put it in a bowl here, I make sure I got enough bread, a whole loaf. I don't care what it is. And then, you, you know, whatever. So some of it can be, uh, you know, you get a spoonful of it. Let me kind of turn over. It doesn't have to be about uh, my, me or my face all the time. And as yeah, you can oh, see yeah. here, I got a big spoonful of it here. And you can pour it right on it like that. And then, boom, you got a nice hunk of, uh, of bread with everything out. You can see the steam coming off of it. A big hunk of green pepper there right in the front. And then I'm about you, to you try just this. eat it right there. This would be perfect for a... Uh, you know, like a bread bowl, you get a big hunk of, of, of bread you cut out in the middle. I've never done that, but it just hit me here. You could get a big, you know, loaf I saw that at the store too, the sourdough. And I was like, should I do no that? Doubt, yeah. <laughs> and just ladle it in there. And then when you're done, you can eat the bread with it too. I mean, that's the best of both worlds. Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. At this point, oh, yeah. I, I want to ask you. When you just did the little taste test, uh, what did you what did you taste first? Because more than likely, it's you're probably going to taste uh, the tomato. I'd say and the, the pepper, green pepper. The, the pepper and the tomato. Exactly. Pepper, That's yeah. literally the first thing that that you get, right? So I'm adding I'm adding a tiny bit more salt, right? I'm gonna add put a little bit more pepper. Good move. But I think I think the salt, if you add the right amount, it's going to bring out, I feel like it'll help bring out some of those extra flavors as well. Right. No doubt, and then at yeah. the end, I definitely got the beef too. Right. So like you're biting into it, you get that tomato. Cause I mean, most of this is tomato, right? Like, I mean, there's no, like that's, yeah, that, that's like, so not, you're going to get that taste of the, the meal here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then, so the orzo, I would actually like to, have you ever added more than half a cup of orzo? Like, have you done yeah, you like can, a full I, cup or I was, was going to tell you this at the end of the video here. Now, if you have a, a bowl fresh off the off the stove here, you know, it's it's night, it's cold outside, whatever you want to do. And when you put this away in the fridge, uh, sometimes not that it's going to dry out, but it will it will turn into kind of uh, more like a, like a stew. Right. And you might have okay. to add in just a little pinch of water when you reheat it that way. So the more orzo you put in, the more I would imagine that it kind of soaks up, you know, the juice, exactly. the tomatoes and all that. Exactly. Stuff. So, yeah. You can make a double batch. You can put in a full cup. You can put in three fourths of a cup. That's up to the, you know, the, the person that makes this dish. So, you know, you know, from start to finish half a cup and, and this is what we get. It, it do it. It tastes, it tastes the first taste. Awesome. Like you said, There's, I mean, it's, it's just, if there's something there's you taste the hominess in it, no, you no, know, yeah. like you, you taste the, the, it, it just, it has that old feel to it. Right. Like, and it's just, it really like, wow, I'm excited. I'm, I'm even more excited to try it with the bread. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing that right now. I'm going to see if oh, I can zoom in here. I've got a little hunk of bread and you let it completely soak in. Hope if it drips, it drips. Here we go. I love seeing the steam coming off of it. Look at that one. That is beautiful. Oh, that man. looks just, awesome. It's amazing. It, <laughs> all right. I got to rip off a piece of bread now. Do it. I got to, uh, let's see. How much did my wife eat of this? <laughs> we can, uh, we can cheers. Hold your baguette up and we'll fake, you know, clink like we're, uh, like it's a drink. I'm going, right? Oh, yeah. My dude. There it is. Cheers. Cheers to you and hit the well. There we go, and then you. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what let's see what comes of this. 
and there's been times where I, where I've made this and, and while you're eating, you don't, don't feel the need to talk here when you, you know, you can cut little slices of the baguette and then you can just throw them right in the bowl as you're eating. Kind of like, you know, when you, when you make cereal or something like that, you kind of dunk everything to make sure, you know, everything gets touched with the milk here. I put big hunks of bread in the bowl of what I'm eating and it let it completely immerse itself in the, you know, the tomato and the, and the green pepper here. Dude, it's I I really want to try it with the bread bowl. Like I think I'm gonna go out tomorrow, get a Do bread it, bowl yeah. and have like and have the leftovers <laughs> in the bread bowl. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. Oh man. I have let me I wanna I got it right here. I, this isn't part of the recipe, it's just kind of uh and again, I have no affiliation with Cavenders, but there's this uh Cavenders, I don't know if anyone can see it. It's this all uh it's all purpose greek seasoning a tantalizing treat Ooh. an ancient uh greek formula and i can take a photo of this because i know the glare from the ring light is uh it gets wild here it makes your teeth extra white makes you look tan a little bit but you can't see anything uh that's right you look in front great. of it here but this one this camera's making you look great my friend bucks at the grocery store and i like to add not as it's the whole thing is cooking but you know per, per bowl here uh just add it in this stuff is amazing on meat too when you grill a steak Ooh. or some chicken okay. thighs whatever you want to do. So I would highly recommend this as well. But again, that's just me. I'm sure you or, or anybody else that's watching this has something in their cupboard they're more fond of to, you know, to spice things up or to put things on. So that's mine. The Cavender's All Greek Seasoning. I put that stuff on, on just about everything, to be honest. I got to give that a shot. I never, I like, I like a, I'm I'm a big fan of make of, of making everything from scratch, right? Like I, not sure. that I don't like going to the store, you know what I mean, and like getting like this and like like I, I smoke a lot of meats, right? Perfect. Down yeah. in Texas, I mean, so I'm working on I'm working on like making my own barbecue sauces. Um, I made my I have my own rub, but it's like it's never good enough, right? I'm my I'm my own worst critic, you know what I mean? Like when it comes to that stuff, but I can I can appreciate the 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 good rubs and spices that are already made in the store right like this cavender like and i wouldn't even think to buy it you know what i mean like why, yeah, why, would, why would i get it what am i going to put it on you know what i mean and i want to thanks say craig one more thing as this you know the heat has been turned off for a couple minutes now and if i can get a shot here not to say if you did it right or you did it wrong this stuff will it will start to thicken up just a little bit because as the heat is on the the, the uh, tomato water tomato juice it is flowing here but if i can zoom in here let me move the camera here and as you can see i'll get it right over that sucker if possible you can see it it might not look like it to you but it'll it, it's starting to thicken up kind of like mm -hmm. if you slap it you know it, it's not really wavy it's not like very uh watery here and that's what i'm that saying. orzo so is as, still as it soaking it up old, and you put it away uh it will absolutely thicken up but it won't be you know it won't thicken up to anything where you, you know it's it's not edible here but uh so that's just a, a testament to uh, you know how you put it together and how, how you did it yeah and that orzo is definitely still soaking all of this up too right no like, doubt uh, yeah. oh i'm i'm pouring a bowl of this do it yeah i've been known to no surprise i'm not saying anything right now you know that i wouldn't want out you know but here but i've been known to eat an entire baguette uh with just one bowl of this stuff you know because again in the in the in the fall in the winter time it's cold and you just want some comfort food or whatever just yep. eat a whole foot long baguette with one bowl of this stuff you know we're talking you know like a big bowl. like this is the bowl i would put it in this massive mixing bowl here but hey to each his own right when you got an appetite uh, all is well and good. My mom always says that the best people in life are those uh, who love to eat, you know? Yeah. Well, can you repeat? Actually, I you might have cut out, actually. So say that again. Your mother said? My mother said the, the best people in life are, are the people that love to eat. You know, people who aren't uh, mm. like picky or finicky. And again, I'm not putting anybody down, but if you can show up to a dinner party and nothing's off the table and yeah, I'll eat anything. I'll try anything. You know, those are the best people. Cause you know, you know, in other facets of their life that you could probably, you know, get along with those folks. And those are the people you want around when you're having a dinner party, when you're barbecuing, you know, when, when conversating and everything is, is most important, you know? Right. They're not thinking about, Oh, this has, this is, I don't like this type of onions, dish. I don't like that. that. Like, of, uh, tomatoes, yeah. Uh, like the, the best people in life are those who, who love to eat. I think it's actually uh, a magnet on the fridge here. Yeah, here it is. 
Oh, Go. Julia Child. I thought my mom made this up, but it was Julia Child. There it is. I mean, who better to say something like that? You know what I mean? Then yeah, it's kind of like the, the Miss Julia the Childs herself. Michael, <laughs> you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, uh, Michael Scott. So this would be the same along the same lines. People who love to eat are always the best people. Julia Child, Lisa DeBack. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with that at all. No. This is, dude. This is unbelievable. I you don't have up. to say that because we're, we're live broadcasting right now, but I, I find it to be uh, very easily made. It's a very cheap dish, too. And you, you get, look at this. I'm sure you could show yours to what you are right now. It's a huge pot. There's a lot. Exactly. Like, like there's pot. a lot. And realistically, like, the most expensive yeah. portion of it is the pound of, of ground chuck, right? And so, it, which right now is pretty through the roof. But let's, when we go back to normal times, a pound of ground chuck is what? Two ninety nine, three ninety nine. A green. I just got right. a green pepper for seventy nine cents, and those uh, cans of tomato soup are, are like forty to fifty cents here. So, in the baguette, same thing, three maybe four bucks or so. You can make this whole thing. And I, I don't know about uh, anybody else, but me, I could eat off this thing for two three days. And you're talking Easily. About what ten twelve bucks max from start to finish. Exactly, I love it, and the, like dishes like that are, and they're great too. And I bet you. Tomorrow, this dish is going to taste even better. Absolutely. Always the next day, right? Always the next day, oh, man. I'm Always got to marinate like oh, big, big leftovers, especially with like a nice Sunday sauce, right? Like a nice gravy. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's always better the next day. Like if I were to open up a restaurant and, and it, Italian was served on it, the sauce would be made the day before, actually. And, then and I would never there. serve Absolutely. it. Yeah. Because it had yep. the, the garlic had a chance to really, you know, do its thing and really ruminate in the sauce or you put, I know, you know, my mom, Italian and my, my grandma and my aunts and uncles on this side of things, they would always put a, uh, like a, a big hunk of pork in there, just like really thin hunk of pork. And it was like winning the lottery when you, when you got a ball with a couple, uh, you know, meatballs and you got the big hunk of pork. It's like you won the yep. lottery because that thing soaked up everything and it was just fell off the bone. It was unbelievable. Yeah. That makes sense. Go. uh, I got Yours looks beautiful. Look at the color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I turned the, the heat off. It's still, with the it's green still sitting and, here. Right. Yeah. The look of it, it looks it like it's just, it's unbelievable. Like, it, guys, it really is. If you want the recipe, I'm sure Detroit Beastie would have no problem with sharing the recipe. You could always message me, message, message Detroit at, at Detroit Beastie on Twitter. Like I said in the beginning, you can find all of his stuff on Team, team Rise or Fall. DFS man constantly every single day. My man puts out articles, YouTube videos, really appreciate all of his work. Like it is, it's just fun to watch as well too, right? Because he loves his cat and beastie is the promo code, right? I think yeah. right? did he, she make an appearance? I'm, I'm, hold on. <laughs> I'm just getting up to, uh, to wiggle the cookie dish and see if she appears here. So if see if she, <laughs> see if she appears, she always appears when it's a lick stick or uh or cookies, but you got it. It's a, it's a, I don't normally say this on broadcast because of one, am I ever going to talk about how I call beastie, but you got to say it, you got to go beastie, and we'll see if she comes. That's about, uh, and then, as good it's as all about the tone. It really exactly. is. It's all about the tone. Same with my dogs. Like they don't, yeah, they do it. not come unless exactly. Right. Yeah. She's a no show per usual, probably sleeping under the bed or in front of the window, something like that. It's all good. Hey, I really, really, truly appreciate you coming on this fantastic, fantastic dish. Like I said, if you want the recipe, hit me up on Instagram, Sven cooks food, Twitter, fantasy Sven. You can find Detroit beastie on Twitter at Detroit beastie. Again, all of his DFS stuff, team rise or fall, go to his Twitter page. He's got everything in his bio. If you want to follow his content every single day, a lot of baseball right now, DFS stuff. Uh, be sure to subscribe to YouTube IBT. Uh, and hit that like button, guys. And uh, Chris, this has been a blast, man. I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, Dave, thank you. And uh, everybody tuning in, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you.